Hello guys, welcome back, I'm EBM and this video is about our Tesla Model 3. Now in summer, I did a video essentially saying, should we sell the car? Not because we didn't like it or anything like that, or we'd had it too long, it was about two and a half years old by that point. It was because of the hyperinflated used car market, especially with EVs, which meant essentially we could get pretty much our money back two and a half years later. So what we paid for it, we would probably get if we sold it privately. And that was quite tempting because six months later now, I'll tell you what we've done. Essentially, we have kept the Tesla, but the cars we were potentially replacing, replacing it with are still the same price today as they were during the summer. So that hasn't changed, but the use price of that Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus has now gone down by about £6,000 in the last six months, mainly due to the fact that the used market is kind of normalising. Still higher than expected, but it's nowhere near the ridiculous nature that it was before. Obviously, as I said, we decided to keep it, um, and we decided to keep it for one main reason. There were essentially three options on the table which I think I mentioned during that video, the Genesis GV60. Ultimately, that would require probably another 15 or more thousand pounds adding onto the Tesla's value to be able to get it. Couldn't afford it, not gonna happen. The same with another Tesla, like a Model 3, Model Y, add another at least 10,000 to 15,000 pound on top, wasn't going to happen. So our budget, due to various things we've done in the house, was essentially whatever we got for the Tesla, if we did indeed sell it which essentially left us with one car, which I think is a fantastic car. I do consider it a little bit of a, a step back from the Model 3, don't get me wrong. But as we've said in the review for it, it's all the car you ever need. And it is the Kia Nero EV. It does about 40 odd miles more in terms of range compared to my Model 3. It's a good family car. It's got decent sized boot and so forth. And essentially we could sell the Model 3 and have got that with no extra added to it. It was like a straight swap, if you will. We would have gone from a car with just over a year left on the warranty of the, the whole car, as opposed to just the battery, um, to a car that had a seven year warranty on everything with the you know, obvious caveats. So because the Model 3 is just a workhorse, it's the commuter vehicle, it's the car we just pile the miles onto, the Nero would be fine. You know, I, I can use the our other car to get my fun from. So this would be just, like I said, the workhorse. So the Nero would be fine, even though it was a little bit of a step back. You know, there are clear advantages over the, having the Tesla to the Nero. You know, it's a lot faster. It's probably cooler tech-wise. It's got a better badge snobbery value to it and so forth. Um, but we, we, we very, very nearly bought one. And then something happened about a week later after what I'm about to tell you. And that just went, no, 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 no. Not because of the Kia, but because of other reasons I'll come to in a second. So essentially, we were ready to put a deposit down on a near run. Six month lead time, which I thought, well, by the time it arrives, my, you know, the, the Tesla's probably dropped in value as it has done. So I actually got something right for a change. So we were looking for a cancellation and there were a few around in the country on Auto Trader, and I rung up my local dealership and sure enough, they had two cancellations of the Nero EV. So I went down to look at it because we'd had the car fairly recently as a press car, so we didn't need a, a test drive or anything. And there was a, a Nero 2 in the colour we liked, or there was a Nero 3, which is the one we wanted, in a colour we didn't like. So ultimately, although we were, we were very close, we thought, nah, 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 we do, we, you know, we're going to have this for a long time. We want the car that we want, which was essentially a 3 in one of two or three colours. So we, you know, just thought, oh, we'll come back. It was, it was a, a, a speculative visit anyway. But had the a Model Three, sorry, a Model Three, a Kia Nero Three, in let's say black or one of the colours we liked, been there, I reckon we'd have said, well, here's the money. We'll give me a few weeks to sell the Model Three, and and I'll come back and collect it. But then a few days later, I went on a long trip, and a few days after that, I went on another long trip. So we're talking about a thousand miles in total for those. And that is when I remembered something which made me, A, partially buy the Model 3 in the first place, the Tesla, 
and also why I'd be a fool at the moment to get rid of it, or rather to not, you know, if I can't get another Tesla, to, to, to leave the brand, as it were. And that's when I was driving down to the AuraCat video, the, the, the event, and that was in Birmingham. Went to charge, plugged it into the supercharger network, no problems, plug, play, nice fast charge. Went to, to get something to eat, so I walked across the car park and right in front of me were the grid serve charge because I was at a service area. There were two chargers in that services. One was faulty and one was working. The one that was working had someone charging at it and two people waiting. And that's when it came back to me. I don't know why it didn't stick in my head when we were looking around. Maybe I just got excited about getting a new car or something. But in this case, I was going down to a car event. It was on a Sunday and that was, uh, you know, that was on offer. And ultimately, I didn't realise this, realize this at the time, but I was the only person there at the entire event on that Sunday. I kind of feel bad that they had to open the event up just for me, but it was genuinely only, the only day I could do. So, for example, if I'd, want, if I'd had to have charged there on that grid turf charger with one person charging, two people waiting, that's probably anywhere from a minute or two to 40 minutes for the guy charging. Same with the other two. So you're looking at anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, maybe even two hours tops before I could even start my charge. And that would have made me very late. So this event would have been opened up just for me and I would have been, what, an hour, an hour and a half late? That is un unacceptable. It's unprofessional. I would never be invited back. And that is why I got a Tesla two and a half years ago because the mileage we do, the long journeys we do, not just for the channel, but visiting people and going to Scotland, things like that. We do use the network often enough for it to be a thing. Not everyone does, it's not that much of a problem. But as I said in a video a week or two back, the network currently is, a, is at its worst in terms of finding one that you can actually access there and then. It is growing, the network's growing at a decent rate, that's, that's fine. But the amount of cars sold is outpacing it by a significant margin, to the point now where the ratio between charge up per car is just it's, it's crackers. It's, it's, it's nowhere near where it needs to be. And I can't see that changing given EV sales are at the highest ever in the next year or two. I can't see that changing at all. So effectively, when it comes back to the car, we decided to keep the Tesla because of the supercharger network. That's Tesla's USP, their unique selling point. That's what we've decided to do. We can't afford a new Tesla. We uh, just have to keep the old one. I suppose. Well, when I say old, it's only two and a half years old and it works. It's three year old in April, so it's getting there. Nearly its first MOT. The Nero, I'd be more than happy with. The Genesis, Genesis GV60, I would prefer to own than the Model 3. I prefer it as a car, but as a package, it can't be beat. And that ultimately is why we're sticking with what we're sticking with. Who knows how long for? But the day. Tesla open up their supercharger network, all of it, I mean, because they've opened a few up to every car. That is when I will probably then suddenly start looking around again and going, oh, well, assuming we can financially, there's no reason to keep the Tesla now. It's a great car, but there are others out there that I prefer that suit me better. So effectively, there we go. We're keeping the Model 3 for um, who knows how long. And uh, it's all because of the charge network as in the supercharger network and the public charger network, me not wanting to downgrade to, if I'm being perfectly blunt, sounds pretty uh, smug and it is, but it's true, it really is true. And I want to know if any of you watching this right now, put it in the comments, have you had a Tesla and you've gone to something else where you have to rely on the public network? How have you seen it? Has it been a, oh God, what have I done? Or, you know, have you not had a problem? Obviously, you need to do enough long journeys for it to really affect you, and not everyone does. But how's it gone for you? Right, so that's it. Uh, I'm done. Uh, please subscribe, all the usual stuff. If you want to become a member, click join. You can't do it on iOS devices for some reason, but you can on anything else. And that gives you early access to videos uh, that normally go up on Friday. You get it on Sunday, and there is now a live stream starting at the end of every month where you can ask me questions just for members only directly 
or indirectly and I will answer them in that video as well as occasional members only video stuff as well so if you want to join and support the channel it's 99p you can pay more if you wish and well that's a bag what do you get for 99p these days not even not even three kilo hours worth of energy okay thanks for watching guys i'll see you soon